and I've learned a lot already, um, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the day. I, of course, want to extend my thanks to the two presenters. Uh, it was uh, great to read their papers in advance, uh, but also to see the uh, images now was very provocative and, uh, and quite compelling for me. So, I, um, as I said, I'll try to be uh, quick about this. I I'll uh, just uh, m make a few comments about both papers, uh, really raise some questions about the papers, and in the end, I just want to uh, um, suggest a couple of possibility, a uh, couple possible ways that uh, we might uh, think of them together and, uh, and press some questions uh, for um, these two presenters and, our, um, and the rest of our, uh, our, our speakers. So, Jason Stuber's paper um, surveys a vast amount of historical material that gives us a picture of what um, pre-World War II exhibition practices that formed the influential notions of Asian art in Europe and America. And I was especially struck by the pr uh, prominence of institutions outside of conventional academia in the story, and I think this is a good, uh, very useful thing for us to uh, pursue. These groups clearly had scholarly uh, aspirations, but they were um, also um, uh, deeply invested in financial and nationalistic concerns that affected the way they structured and became understood as Asian art. And I think uh, Jason's schema helps us um, point, uh, pinpoint some of those uh, factors that might have been at play. We see in his uh, account a truly popular swell of interest in Chinese art. Um, I had no idea the numbers, uh, the hundreds of thousands that would have been uh, seeing these, and so we need to pay very close attention to cultural forces that were at play in the 20, uh, early 20th century. And I had a few uh, specific comments on details of the paper. Uh, for example, in part one, um, Jason, oh, there he is. Uh, uh, you outlined some of the exhibitions of Asian art uh, in Europe in the late 20th and early, uh, uh, late 19th and early 20th century. And I'm curious why um, London was so prominent. What factors would have uh, uh, would have brought it to the uh, core there? I mean, just on a level of uh, twice as much in many ways. Um, and uh, you mentioned a little bit uh, about um, uh, the United States, uh, but to what degree did the United States play a significant role in this uh, story, especially through the 1930s, uh, not just in that um, earlier um, 1916 exhibition in San Francisco. And in part two of the presentation, we heard about displays of modern and contemporary uh, Asian art together. And I wonder if um, you can unpack, uh, if we have time, uh, some of the specific works and artists uh, that were uh, uh, either included or excluded, and what that might tell us about the different cultural agendas at play there. And finally, I, I uh, appreciated your comments on Noguchi and, and putting uh, this current exhibition in that context. And so, um, I'm wondering uh, about, uh, or I, I think we, uh, we can explore perhaps in our discussion, some of the ways that an artist is a kind of curator, how they um, make certain selections, how they um, uh, construct a certain um, exhibition of self, uh, of uh, nation, all these things, these same factors that are at play. And I think uh, we might see that certainly in Noguchi and uh, to a certain extent Shiba Shir's work as well. And before I move on to Spiker's uh, paper, I would like to highlight one more point raised by Stuber's presentation, um, the use of terms like East and West. Um, now, um, I, I feel like there's a sort of dance around that will use these terms and then try uh, and then suppress them. Um, and we see uh, in all of the papers some of the dangers and uh, complexities of using them, East and West and the, uh, the Orient or whatever terms uh, you want to use. Now, as historically situated period terms, uh, they may be quite relevant and useful. However, the continuing reliance, um, at least in sort of more popular, um, uh, uh, popular press of these con uh, conceptual categories, it um, reifies them and implies they have more stable substance than they, uh, than they actually do. So as a museum professional, especially for Jason, I'm wondering how um, you imagine trying to get beyond uh, these terms of East and West that whereas this, uh, the academic community may have, uh, maybe finding ways to, um, uh, to shift these boundaries or complicate them, how um, you both play into and uh, undercut them uh, in your own exhibitions. So, um, turning to Christina's paper, uh, Christina Spiker's paper, is a really exciting examination of um, a much neglected, um, uh, for me, which much neglected history of, uh, of Ainu art, at least certainly for the perspective of uh, art history. I hope that she and other scholars will continue um, uh, to study this mater material in increasing depth. Her research on the uh, intersections of more contemporary ideas of anthropology, science, art, colonialism and scholarship demonstrates the necessity of careful interdisciplinary and, uh, disciplinary research and the fruitfulness of close analysis of textual and visual discourses. So in her paper, we treated a host of fascinating characters such as Star, Matsuura, Bet Goro, um, uh, who, can, uh, who course between these different categories. The visual record of the encounters are especially compelling to me and uh, I'm left wanting to know much more. 
So in terms of some specific questions for Christina, um, first of all, what was the uh, notion, uh, was the notion of art uh, as a sort of um, high art, fine arts, important star, and for that matter, Petrogoro, um, and did star make significant distinctions between art and more sort of scientific, ethnographic artifact uh, in his collection? And I think you're definitely right to point out ways that internal uh, others radically complicate simplistic notions of East and West. I think that one of the great challenges of your larger project is recovering the voice of people like Batagoro. Uh, and we see you beginning to do that here, but what other scholarly resources might you, um, uh, might you pursue to hear more from them? Does the visual record pre uh, present any special insights or dangers in trying to recover these voices? And lastly, I'd love to know more about Betagoro's later life, the anecdote you recount at the end from uh, when um, Starr uh, re-encounters him uh, gives us some hints, but um, did he and, um, uh, and uh, the other, or, or the other I knew ever recount uh, their um, experiences in a way that historians have access to? And I think that's an important point. Um, and just as a minor aside with, um, uh, with uh, Christina's uh, presentation, I really enjoyed seeing the uh, Prezi being used. I think that's um, something that uh, is, um, it, it lends itself well to visual presentations, but can often be quite uh, uh, disturbing and uh, um, uh, um, vertigo-inducing, so it's great to see it being used well uh, for a compelling and cogent argument. So these two papers cover rather two dif distinct time periods and bodies of material. Nonetheless, I think they share some common themes that are relevant to our discussion. Let me just suggest two right now. First, the question of can information is crucial to both these papers. Stu uh, Stuber um, explicitly shows how the exhibitions he considers shape notions of what Chinese art uh, was and uh, what should be valued in these traditions. Spiker gives us a number of different canons to contend with, including a very interesting canon of ethnicity about what a proper uh, Ainu man would look like and the ways that a nonconformist uh, like Betagoro, in his own way, um, uh, uh, how he undercuts those. So given these provocative analyses, what should we, as educators and scholars, do, to these can do with these canons? Are they to, to, are they to be discarded whole cloth, or should we, uh, some of the threads be salvaged for some new historical tapestry we might try to weave? And a second point, or second question for, uh, for both in general, and uh, is the negotiated uh, national identities seem to be key to both these case, case studies. Spiker gives us many ways to reassess the status of Ainu art in relation to wider notions of so-called Japanese art and modernity in the early 20th century. And Stuber reminds us of the overlapping nationalistic agendas in both Asian and Europe. Uh, with the issue of canon formation and its inheritance, I have another question for both of you and our audience in general. As scholars and institutions attempt to move beyond the profound limitations of older national narratives, what are our real alternatives? So with these uh, preliminary and disciplinary comments, I once again thank our presenters uh, for raising these provocative questions, and I look forward to hearing more from you and your colleagues. Thank you. <laughs>